G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're going to run through a tutorial in Autodesk Revit that deals with using lookup tables in content creation, um, a technique that I find not many people know about but can really help your content skills. So I've got a previous series about making families, so feel free to watch that if you're a bit more new to the concept, um, but if you're a bit more advanced like I am, um, this tutorial should hopefully help you as it comes. Uh, so we run through a lot of stages in the series, so feel free to chase up on those. So we're looking at lookup tables um, today, which is basically a, a nested table in a family. You might have spotted the button before, but not used it. And basically it's this button down in the top, in the bottom right, when you refer to family types, and you can nest a, a table essentially within that environment. And they look a little bit like this when they're in Excel. Um, so you typically have a, a name for what the type is, and this is pretty much irrelevant. And this first column is what matters. So this is what you'll be looking up to find a value elsewhere. So very similar to something called VLOOKUP in Microsoft Excel, but in a Revit family environment instead. Um, so you look up, sorry, this is the name, but essentially you look up this number as well. And you obtain the values correlating to that row when you do so. Um, and it's important to understand the lookup table at its source is what's called a comma separated value file. I do actually do another series um, where I deal with how to use CSV files. Um, it has a little bit longer, but otherwise uh, it's me. Um, and that that's, will give you a better idea of how to process these files through Excel. Um, so why do we use lookup tables? Um, so they're a, they're a very lesser known feature, but they have a lot of power because they basically let you manage types within types. Um, or instance driven conditions that can give you a range of types based on that condition. An example would be pipe insulation being responsive to the diameter of a pipe set on either a type or instance basis. Um, it could be really helpful because you might not want to have to constantly keep using a formula to denote that. Um, other things can be outer and inner uh, diameters of pipes being responsive to one another uh, via a table. Um, and today's example we'll look at is controlling vision panel sizes in a range of doors. Um, and you can also use it for latch side clearance zones um, to lock them down to known values. Um, so we're trying to avoid the use of this really long formulas that become quite awkward to work with. And if you need to make a change to them, they're quite difficult to work with. Um, so essentially we're doing away with that. And this, we're going to use a syntax in the families in order to call upon a lookup table, which is basically this formula at the top. So it's size underscore lookup bracket, and then it's a, a lookup table name, in which case I recommend that you tie it to a single parameter that way you're not typing it out multiple times and then the the triple x is the name of the field in the lookup table itself that you're looking for um, y is the size if there's no match found and then uh, the last parameter is basically the value in column one that you're searching for um, again i suggest you tie that to a parameter instead to make it easier which you'll see in my demonstration and uh, in this case we're going to make it so that the lookup parameter must be of type length but you can play with using text as well. For example, there are other ways you can work with lookup tables, but today we're just looking at length. So this is an example of a lookup table and Excel. So you can see the various things lining up to each other. So I'm searching for this value, which I've tied to a parameter at the back of my formula. And you can see I've got multiple formulas drawing upon that value. Um, from there, we're finding the value 300 because we're calling upon the lookup table. And X is basically our, um, our condition that we're looking for up here, which is our parameter name. So these two parameters don't have to match in name. We're calling on this name in the table when we refer to it. So I'll do a demonstration of, I guess, how this actually works. So we're aiming to get to a door family that can do this sort of thing, have a range of view panel sizes that can be really easily controlled, um, basically by use of an instance parameter for view panel type. So as I cycle through those, you'll see my vision panels alternate. But you can see that I've just got one type. And if I change my family type to another one, the, the vision panel remains. So it's a type within a type, essentially. So we're going to start off with the door family that I've set up. And I've already set up this family to have a vision panel in it. So if I just hide my dimensions. Basically, the way the family is set up is it has a, a bunch of formulas basically driving all of this. So we'll take out our lookup, our lookup values. And I'll just remove my lookup table as well. But basically... If we take that out, I'll just strip this back a little bit because this is closer to the end of what we're looking at. I'll keep this in here. Uh, okay, so what we're looking at is a door family with width, height, thickness. That's pretty standard. Um, but beyond that, I've set up a whole range of parameters to deal with creating a vision panel in that door. So if I go to exterior view, you'll see that I've set up basically a 
extrusion uh, for my glass panel, but I haven't cut my panel with that reference plane because there is the chance that the vision panel could hit the edge of the frame and potentially break the door extrusion. So what I do instead is I host a void to the front of the door. So the void is hosted on this plane of the family, pushed back by 50 mil, and there's a formula that's driven in here, which basically says if the X or the Y distance of the vision panel do not add up to zero, um, then it's, it's cutting the door basically. And likewise, this is connected to the glass panel of the vision panel. And then the void inset is set by that formula as well. So it's either zero, which means it doesn't cut through the door, or it does. So if I make my vision panel zero by zero, you'll see I've got another thing that kicks in as well, which is an override. So these are all actually driven by a parameter, which is driven by another parameter. So if it's ever less than one, it becomes a hundred instead so that the, the extrusion doesn't break. And from there, there's another thing I'll talk about in a sec, which relates to centric relationships. But you can see what happens there is basically the void pushes back so it doesn't cut the door anymore. The panel is turned off and essentially the door is not cut. So that's how you can nest, uh, I guess, a, a cutting element within a family. I use that in a lot of other cases as well. So from there, I've also got basically a, an offset parameter in the X direction and an offset parameter in the Y direction. These are also overridden because I basically want the family to be built in such a way that I can get it to recognize when I want a panel of a particular size to be centered or when I want a panel of a particular offset to be centered. Um, so the, the, the width and the depth, uh, the, width, the width and the height of the vision panel may not necessarily always be uh, explicit. They might be driven by a relationship. So I've, what I've said here is there's a condition where if something equals this number, um, and you'll see why I make this a number soon, instead it's basically the way of the vision panel to tell itself actually i want you to be centric so if i say that it's a it's a one two three four five by one two three four five the override comes in and says okay i can see that you're centric now so what i'm doing instead is saying the width take two offset or the height take two offset and what we get then instead is a family that's centric so if i say my x offset is 100 and my y offset is 200 you'll see that I get a centric relationship where it's 100, 100, 200, 200. Um, but otherwise I can also have that at say 900 high, 100 offset, 300 wide, 600 high. None of them reach the centric number. And then you can see my panel is just a standard vision panel. So what we're gonna use is basically a lookup table value for each of these to drive these to a particular range. And sometimes we're gonna to need to use this number in the lookup table to make these centric relationships depending on the vision panel type. And then we've also created another parameter, which is another length parameter in this case, just to make it easier to use, which is our vision panel type. So ideally that's what we'll use to drive uh, our, our, our vision panel in principle. So I'll just open up the lookup table that I've built. Um, so these can be whatever you want them to be. This could be like a vision, vision panel one, 300 by 600. You could call them whatever you like in principle. This is just your way of naming it internally. So when you're working with this file, you understand what you're looking at. These are important. So this is basically the parameter name in the lookup table, uh, what type of parameter it is and how big it is, uh, what scale or unit it is. Um, you can also look up how to deal with text as well. There's different syntaxes you can put into these. I always recommend actually just looking at a family type file and you'll see what these are typically for different parameters and you can match those up if you wanna use text, for example. So this is what we're gonna look up basically. Is it one, two, three, or four? And these are the things that we're gonna get returned depending on the parameter. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is actually go into back into our family and we're gonna to wanna to manage our lookup tables. I've already got one in here, but basically what you would do is import that file. In this case, I will replace it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our syntax, which is size underscore lookup. Okay, and then beyond that, we'll call out our, our parameter, which is naming our lookup table. So we actually need to do that first. So what I usually do for this is I create a text parameter. And I just call it something like lookup table name. And we'll make that type based. And what we want that to be is basically this. And the reason why I'm putting that in one place is that if that lookup table changes names, you don't have to revisit all your formulas because you've already called out a parameter that implies that, that figure. So what we'll do is size underscore lookup. And I can call out that parameter instead. 
And then from there, so I'll just return to my presentation so you can remember the order that we're running through. So let's look up table name, which value are we looking for, the default, and then the number that we're looking up. So if I go back to my family again, so even I forget this sometimes actually. So we want to look up in this case, X. So we're going to say X and you need to put it in quotations. So it searches for text. And if it's, if there's no match, it's zero because then these formulas will come in and override it and turn off the vision panel. And we're looking for the parameter VP type. Sometimes that can be a little bit finicky. Okay. So I forgot to add an L there. That was why that wasn't working. So you've got to make sure this is exactly as it needs to be. Size so lookup, lookup table name, which calls out this. X is what we're looking for, zero, and then VP type. And you see what it's done is it's actually went and pulled that value from the table. So it's went and found that. So if I said Y, for example, it should give me 900 instead. What we're going to do is take that, copy the formula and say, now we want Y. And there you go, 900. Um, and from there, it's pretty much what you'd expect it to be. Um, I think that's a capital. And Y off. So that, it all depends on what you call them. Um, so in this case, you can see I've called this X, off, X offset and Y offset for well, Y off for Y offset. You'll see where I've used one, two, three, four, five to imply centric relationships. So you'll see those sort of uh, take effect, I guess, at the family level. Um, but it's important to establish that relationship um, by locking it down with a parameter, ideally. Okay, so these are all hooked up to a table now. So pretty much as we change these, these should all change as well. So you'll see those changing there. And you'll see there, for example, that we're getting a one, two, three, four, five, which is being overridden uh, based on this formula to give us 200 in this case. Um, so that, that's how that works. So we'll just say zero for now. And you'll see that everything reversed to zero. So that's quite powerful. So beyond that, we can just load this into our project. I'll just double check this is the same family just to make sure it works. Keep in mind, I also have multiple types in this family as well. So this is a type system that's layered upon types. I might just load this in and swap them over. Okay. So I'll just take these and make them formula added. Okay. And let's say we want to add like a type one to this one. So all you have to do is find your instance parameter. And there you go. You can see it's pulling on those values. Type two is slightly smaller. Type three is a centric panel. So if this changed size, for example, so if we made that say 1500, so we'll make a different type. We'll make it 1500 wide. You will notice that it still maintains that centric relationship between the type of panel. If we made it the type four even, and then we go back to say a 900, you'll note that it, re it retains that offset parameter and it keeps that central relationship. So this is a really strong system and you can see just how easy it is to set up as well. Once you get your head around the syntax of the formula, you can see even I had to sort of remember that myself because uh, I don't use it too often. Um, so that, that's the demonstration seeing the table in action. Um, I'll show you a very practical application, one that as an architect I find really helpful. Um, Latch side clearance. So you probably know about your 1428 disabled clearances around doors and zones where you have to keep them clear. So essentially for my company, what I did is I made these into 3D families and I used a lookup table to define the, these distances. So there's a massive table I've built and it basically it understands the clearance of the door as well and factors that in. And all the user has to do is put in which diagram number from the BCA they're referring to when they set their latch side clearance family. So it's basically a nested component within the door itself, um, which has a few graphics as well to tell you which way you're going into the door itself. And you can see there just how easy it is for a user to set those as well. And the lookup table does all the heavy lifting from there. So a very practical application, but I guess um, now it's your turn. So uh, give it a try, um, try to find a practical application in your office, even if it is literally this application, try and do this yourself because it'll be a re very rewarding experience to do this as a, a BIM manager or a content creator. It's a real challenge. Um, and I think when I did it myself, it was a huge trial and a, a big thing for me to, me to overcome in my skill set. Um, so thanks for watching today. That was a really quick tutorial, I guess, but hopefully you got something out of that and um, you learned something more about how you can use lookup tables in your everyday workflows. Uh, any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if you enjoy what you saw, feel free to follow and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Take care. Bye.